world of time does not have any linearity. We try to think in time as a, as a continuous sequence uh, that's a straight line. Time is not straight in our physical world of mass. That's why we have so much trouble functioning as human beings, because in our mind, time is straight. In the higher dimensions which our mind occupy, time is straight. Time follows a logarithmic spiral of infinity, and this is the pathway that time takes. It's called the underpinning geometry of the universe. Everything I'm saying, I mean literally. And because I never undertalk an audience, that is the most great name of God. That is a symbol. That's God's petroglyph. In other words, while we were all doing our own petroglyph stuff, God was doing his too. Okay? And what was the purpose of our petroglyphs? But to essentially find the, the supreme, the most great being. All coherent intelligence, perfect brain waves, as Spock would say. This is a steel rail. You must stay on it. It's a train track. You can't go off it. Okay? Now, 32 doubled is 64, and 6 and 4 is 10 is 1. Back to 1. 128, 11, 2. 256, 13, 4. 512, 8, 1024, 7. Etc. It'll go on infinitely, of course. Everyone follow that? Okay. Remember, I'm trying to show you how from the inside, it crosses the axis, that, there's, that it's very important that I'm trying to show you there's something inside it. There's something in the middle. Okay? No one's ever been able to see this inside the middle before. So, we're going to go backwards instead. So, a half of one is 0.5. A half of 0.5, okay, and there's a 5 matching a 5. Then a half of 0.5 is 0.25. But 2 plus 5 equals 7. This is where it starts to suddenly hit home that you're about, that you see that I really am meaning perfection when I say perfection. And what, and why is there, what does perfection mean in your life? This is when it starts getting personal to you and when you start taking it internally. Okay, so now 0 0.25 is a, 0 0.5 is a half of 0.25, and 0.25, half of that is 0.125. Well, 1 plus 2 plus 5 equals an 8. These numbers are never changing. They're never moving. A half of 0.125 equals 0.0625, which equals 13, which equals 4. Half of 0.0625 equals 0.0325, which equals 11, which equals 2. Equals 0.01625 if we half it as, again, which is 1. And I can't say the numbers after that. I'm not going to try because it's just too long. Does everyone understand that so far? All I was doing was halving? It's fascinating. Yeah. It keeps on getting better. <laughs> Our end goal is to explain eternity. Because eternally, eternity is that linearity. This emanation is eternal. It's the light of eternity. And that's what we talk about in our aura. We talk about it in the radiance of good health. We call it prana, chi, orgone, spirit. Indians have many names for it. That's timeless, though, isn't it? No. That, that uh, or, or at least it's timeless in, in this, well, I'm picturing it this way, correct me, please. I picture it as... Um, Actually, I was wrong of, for saying out no. Of the, um, out of the plane of the circuit of, um, of time, it comes as a perpendicular, uh, and its intersection with the time is uh, what we're seeing there, but it actually comes perpendicularly out, okay? So, uh, in that sense, it's dimensionless only except where it intersects the... Uh, totally correct. Yeah. Pretty heavy duty, huh? Yeah. The powers of 10 come from half of 1 is 0.5. That would be 1 over 1, by the way, correct? 1, line, 1. This would be 5 over 10. Okay? So the 10 goes there. This would be 25 line 100. 100 would go there. This would be 125 thousandths. Okay, so we have now 625 ten thousandths, 3,125 hundred thousandths. This is called the powers of 10. 
One times 10 is 10, 10 times 10 is 100, 10 times 100 is 1,000, 10 times 1,000 is 10,000. 100,000, million, 10 million, 100,000, 1 billion, 10 billion, 100 billion, a trillion. In science and math today, they teach that numbers, as in arithmetic, cannot explain geometry. And I discovered they were wrong. I discovered that numbers are geometry. They are, numbers are not modeling something. They are the model themselves. It's a real big discovery. It means that five billion people would flunk math. The only problem is, is if these two points are perfect mirrors, there's an axis down the center, everything's a mirroring right and left. It's called bilateral symmetry then what do we do with the 1 and 8, since they're not mirrors? Or the 2 and 7, since they're not mirrors? Or the 4 and 5, since they're not mirrors? Okay. Well, do we throw out the whole system? Do we say that we finally found something that was incorrect in my discovery, that mathematically it's obsolete already? We challenge it to the maximum. Any error, any mistake anywhere in it, any incongruity, we rip and tear this thing apart. And we find out where that error and what that is and if it's really wrong. So the only way I can do that is I go ahead and I say, well, where's our symmetry that I've been talking about? Where's our parity? Where's our mirroring? Where's our wings? See how the right side over here is a perfect mirror? They're like two wings on a bird flying. Where is it? So I take our multiples of 1 from the standard multiplication table. I reduce them to single digit, which I call the kids multiplication table, using horizontal math. And I look at the symmetry. Well, multiples of 1 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Well, multiples of 8 is 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 9. I look at multiples of, of 2. 2, 4, 6, 8, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Multiples of 7, a perfect mirror. 7, 5, 3, 1, 8, 6, 4, 2, 9. I look at multiples of of 5 and 4, 4, 8, 3, 7, 2, 6, 1, 5, 9, which is the total reverse of 5, 5, 1, 6, 2. Everything's a mirror. 3 is 3, 6, 9, 3, 6, 9, 6 is 6, 3, 9, 6, 3, 9. But 9, it's self-similar. It's always 9, 9, 9, 9. So let's see if that's true. So sure enough, I go multiples of 1 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That means 8's the last number before 9. I better have an 8 over here being a mirror of that 8, and I better have a 7 after it, but 2 8's is 16, I'm writing them for your benefit, which is 7. 3 8's is 24, there it is again, which is a 6. 32, 5, 44, and of course I got 3, 2, 1, 9 after it, because once I got three numbers, I got a stereoscopic projection. I know all the remaining numbers are going to be of the same sequence. Perfect mirrors. The real clincher is when I do it with 2. 2, 4, 6, 8, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, okay, which is 7, 5, 3, 1, 8, 6, 4, 2, 9. 2 sevens is 14, which is 5. 21, 3, 28, 10, 1. Uh, 7 times 5 is 35, 8, etc. 42, 6. Everyone follow that? Any statements, anybody? Nine. <laughs> you like nine? It's safe. You're playing it safe. <laughs> you bring apples to the teacher. I suffered walking down the halls of UCLA. They say, well, you should be going to, to linear science. I go to the professors of linear science, and they don't, all their everything is curvature. And I'm saying, what's going on here? I, they, they don't even use the terms. But we're still modeling that in terms of, of what we see every day. Uh, uh, you know, we're using models, and it's very hard to depict that because it's, it's, it's beyond our perception. Totally. What he just said was that this energy going out is omnidimensional. The only thing that we can have for an analogy for it is the queen on a chessboard. You know, the old king, he's really straddled just one little step at a time. He's definitely hindered. Okay, but, uh, or a duke, or a, um, a king, or a castle, they move certain ways. But the queen 
can move diagonally, she can move horizontally, vertically, she can move any way she wants. She define, defines the whole game. She's our most prized piece in the game of chess. Okay. Yes, Judy? I don't know if it's appropriate to say this, but um, in my mind, God and man, and in the spirit of God, and the spirit of God is this. 